Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the benefits of using multiple effectors to create some really cool dynamic animations that look pretty complex, but really are really simple to set up. So in this example, I have this animation where I have these uh, separate objects that spell out the word flip, pop forward, rotate, and pop backwards, revealing the uh, word flop. So believe it or not, this was actually, this whole entire uh, animation was created with two keyframes. So right there you can tell that you know, you're, you're really saving a lot of time and hassle trying to manually keyframe things. So let's just jump right in. I have my object set up. We have flip on the front and the word flop on the back. And it's positioned upside down so that when it rotates forward, uh, it'll be upright. So first thing we need to do is uh, allow the, these objects to be affected by MoGraph effectors. And how we do that is using a fracture object. And what a fracture object will do is when I throw all these objects in here, it will allow us to now use this effector tab and just drag and drop whatever effectors we want to use with this. And it will now enable these objects to be uh, affected by these effectors. So first effector I'm going to use to create that initial animation I showed at the top of the tutorial is a plane effector. And a plane effector just uh, affects plane position, scale, and rotation values. And right now position's checked and it's in the positive y direction. So you can see that the when I click it on and off, it jumps up 100 centimeters in the y. And we don't want it to jump up in the Y, we want it to jump forward. So we need to uh, change this to a negative value in the Z uh, plane direction. So all of our words, all of our uh, letters now pop forward 250 centimeters, so that's good. But we don't want all of these objects to pop forward all at once. We want a gradual uh, left to right um, uh, movement. So how we do that is by using a falloff. And a falloff defines an area or defines a boundary where the, uh, the effector is affecting the object. So right now it's set at infinite, which means it's applying it to the whole entire scene. We need to use a linear because we need to affect from left to right linearly. So right now the orientation's in plus Z. We actually need to go in the uh, positive X and right away, you can see half of it is affected. And that's because whatever is in front of the direction of this fall off, as it goes from left to right, whatever is behind it gets affected. Whatever is in front of it hasn't been affected yet. So as this whole entire plane goes through, it starts affecting it from left to right, which is what we want. And you can also adjust. Uh, the size of the fall off, so this is more tapered and uh, more gradual, or we can shrink it down and have it more a more abrupt kind of movement. We want a little tapered movement, so I'm gonna just uh, scale out this uh, this fall off. So we got part one set up. Yeah, I'm just gonna position this off to the side and. Uh, now we need to make it rotate. So again, I'm going to use another plane effector. And this time, this time I'm going to make sure that rotation is, uh, is checked. And we've got to make sure that it's actually applied. And let's actually rename these plane effectors just for organization's sake. So this is uh, forward plane. And this is rotation plane. All right, so now we know what we're, what we're dealing with. Uh, so you can now adjust the rotation. And if I go 180 degrees on the pitch, it'll reveal the flop. And that's what we want. Uh, we also have to go in here and change the uh, fall off here also to a, a linear. and. If I drag this from left to right, uh, it goes from flip, and as the effector starts affecting and the falloff starts uh, 
moving past the scene, it will then start the rotations. So that's what we want. Uh, I'm gonna actually position this kind of right up next to where the other one is because we're gonna need it to uh, pop forward and then rotate and then pop back again. So I'm gonna basically set up this little train of, uh, of MoGraph effectors. So I'm gonna move these off to the side and we're gonna now create our last plane effector that is going to do the back plane, the backwards plane. And again, make sure that it's applied to the uh, fracture object. And right away, it's, uh, it's pushing it down again with the default value. And we just want to go back to the uh, back to where it came from. So we need to do the same value as we did to get it forward, which is negative 250. And again, make sure we change our fall off to linear and in the plus uh, X and bring out this fall off a little bit. So it's a little bit more gradual. And then you can see that as the fall off is affecting and passing through the uh, objects, it's pushing it back. So now if I move this up, this uh, backward plane fall off up next to the rotation plane. And if I actually make both of these a child, of the forward plane, now I have the ability to just move all of these at once. And you can start to see that right away we're, we're seeing the uh, movement. So the first plane effectors fall off is going passing through and now the rotation's affecting it and the fall off's passing through and the backward plane is now passing through and pushing the objects back. So that all we all that needs all that we need to do is just uh, keyframe this one object so I'm gonna turn off all these other values and just use the position hit a keyframe go to say 80 and just uh, move this along the X let's zoom out so we need to make sure that all the fall off passes through or if we, if we just keyframed it here, you can see we still have a little bit of position and uh, still affecting, or not affecting it fully. So you need to make sure that your fall off goes completely through the object for it to fully reach that position that you set in the effector. So now, now if I just hit play, you can see we have our animation that uh, I showed you at the very beginning with with two keyframes. So the last thing we can do is add a nice finishing touch to this, which is adding a little spring to each of the movements. So it has a little overshoot with uh, the rotations and the position. And how we can uh, achieve that effect is by using a delay effector. And the delay effector has a few modes. Uh, one of them spring. Uh, there's another one called blend even, which are kind of like using ease in, ease out uh, keyframes uh, for each of the movements. But we want to use a spring for this one. And if I really turn this value up or the strength up and bring it to the front of the animation, press play, you can really see how that delay effector is adding that extra nice uh, springiness to the animation. So I'm actually going to turn this down a little. We don't want it too much. We just want a little subtle, little subtle animation so it looks a little bit more uh, dynamic. And right there you have a really uh, interesting animation again with only two keyframes. Uh, and it's all with... So that, those are the benefits of uh, using multiple effectors. Really, there's limitless options because there's a ton more effectors here. Uh, but by combining them together, it really harnesses the power of the MoGraph effector inside of Cinema 4D.